Hey, if you want a headline, a book title, or a podcast promo to capture attention, just make sure the word inflammation is prominently displayed. Why? Because uh, there's increasing evidence indicating that low-grade inflammation is a significant player in a host of conditions ranging from diabetes and cardiovascular disease to arthritis and bowel ailments. Inflammation occurs when the body's immune system responds to potentially damaging stimulus, such as a cut or an attack by a virus. Various white blood cells mobilize to deal with the situation, and blood flow increases to deliver them to the site of the battle. That battle is characterized by the classic signs of inflammation, swelling, redness, pain, and heat. Once the enemy is defeated, the symptoms vanish. However, if the threats are more subtle and continuous, such as elevated levels of glucose in the blood and excess of free radicals or traces of toxins, then low-level chronic inflammation ensues with possible damage to healthy tissues. When it comes to chronic inflammation, researchers point at omega-6 fats as a cause while absolving omega-3 fats from such crimes, even suggesting that the latter have an anti-inflammatory effect. With the increasing use of seed oils, such as soy, canola, and sunflower, the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fats in our diet has increased significantly from 4 to 1, which is thought to be ideal, to as much as 15 to 1. This has prompted calls for reducing intake of seed oils and increasing intake of omega-3 fats, mainly from fish. If for some reason fish cannot be part of the diet, chia, hemp, and flax seeds, as well as walnuts, are also sources of omega-3 fats. Uh, by the way, these terms omega-6 and omega-3 refer to the molecular structure of the fats and indicate the first double bond encountered when you count from the end of the molecule. There seems to be enough sound evidence behind the clamor to reduce the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fats in our diet. But in science, numbers matter, which brings us to some misguided advice on the internet about avoiding almond milk because it is pro-inflammatory and choosing grass-fed beef over grain-fed for its anti-inflammatory effect. Yes, Almond milk has a stunningly high ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Why? Because it contains virtually no omega-3 fats. But a glass of almond milk, 240 milliliters, contains only about a half a gram of omega-6 fats to start with. That's a trivial amount. So the ratio to omega-3 is irrelevant. If you like almond milk, drink it without worries about any inflammatory effect. How about grass-fed versus grain-fed beef? Here the ratio is 2.6 for grass-fed and 7.3 for grain-fed that certainly appears to weigh in on behalf of grass-fed beef. But whoa! Before worrying about ratios, how about asking about the amounts of omega-6 and omega-3 fats found in a serving? That's about 100 grams of beef. In grass-fed, this is 175 milligrams of omega-6, 68 milligrams of omega-3, while in grain-fed, 330 milligrams of omega-6 and 45 milligrams of omega-3. Once again, these are insignificant amounts, a small fraction of the total fat, which is 5,000 milligrams for grass-fed and 11,000 milligrams for grain-fed. An argument can be made for choosing grass-fed on account of its lower total fat content and environmental benefits but not because of any anti-inflammatory effect. If you're looking for a diet that really does have some anti-inflammatory potential, look for one with olive oil, fish, lean meat, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, walnuts, and ground flax seeds. And don't stress too much about omega-6 to omega-3 fat ratios, because stress also causes inflammation. And that for today is our Cup of Joe.